There we go. Hey, good morning, Facebook friends and family. Um, Scott McKeever, call your RV over in Rockford, Illinois. Keep it real with Scott. Keep it real. Got some coffee. It's funny, I make this coffee every morning. I have it sitting here. And um, I usually don't end up drinking it because I talk too much and it gets cold. i got to make another one. But hey, anyway, uh, wow, what a, what, a, what a lame Super Bowl, I guess. I, I, not what anybody expected by any stretch of the imagination. Don't really care who wins. Um, the Bears weren't in it, so what the heck, right? And Packers weren't in it, and I'd root against them if they were for all my Packer friends. Uh, but we, we, know, we know how it's real, right? Um, but that Tom Brady, the, the, the Patriots, hats off to him. You know, how does that work to be that dominant? And I, I think part of what that is is the ability to keep the main characters in play for so long, for so many years to keep that team together. I mean, there's been some changes, obviously, there always is, but at the end of the day, so many of those have been together for so long, and it truly builds success. You just don't see that in any organization nowadays. You know, people, it's just like a revolving door. Uh, a lot of times it's all about the money, and, and you know, and, and I don't know how much money does a guy need to make. I want to make more, right? I know we all do, but when you get to that level. But anyway, that's here or there, you know. Um, it just it's it's funny how things feed into another thing on my way to work this morning my drive in um, Of course, I'm early today because Tyler my grandson come over Watched the Super Bowl he spent the night and then I had to take him back home this morning to get on the bus for school and all that good stuff um, Love having that guy around with me um, So I got in early so I'm like well, I can go back home or I can go to work I'll just go to work get her get her started. We got units to move and all that but uh but, you know, they, they built a tremendous team in so many organizations. They just don't do that, whether it's in, you know, sports or, or whatever the case may be. You know, people just, they're always running. And I guess that's, it's not a bad thing. I did a lot of that over the years. I, I've done so many crazy, so many things. It's incredible. Um, it really makes you well-rounded. Gives you a lot of in-depth knowledge about a lot of different stuff. I mean, we can go to the electrical section at, at, at Lowe's and have a blast or the plumbing and because I was I worked there for a few years too. So um, but anyway, I, I think the point I'm trying to make is like here at Collier, you know, we have a tremendous team. We've got technicians that have been with this company for twenty plus years. You know, they learn the ins and the outs and we learn each other, right? Uh, Mark Bozen, one of our sales guys, has been here the longest. Um, I know he's over 15 years here, and Terry Turner is not very far behind him. Um, and then I'm third. I'm going on my ninth year. You know, and, I, and our, our newest member, uh, Nunzio, my business partner here, you know, he's going on his third year. So, um, do we see Carmen over in detail, and then them got, I mean, we just got some, some people. We got a really, really good team, uh, and it makes it very strong because we, we know each other. We know the organization. We know what our goals are. We know what we want to do. We know the improvements that we want to make. Because that's what everybody out there wants to do is we want to make those improvements, right? To make us all better and all stronger and, and to have a tremendous client base that, that appreciates us. Because we greatly appreciate them. Let me tell you, that's, that's what makes it all work, right? So that's what we strive to do. And I think that's part of what uh, makes the New England Patriots so good is they just they've kept it together. You know, key players didn't run off for the next big dollar. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, with that said, today I want to touch base on water heaters. Um, this is a topic that I've wanted to talk about for a long time. Water heaters in the RV industry can be challenging. And so I guess it's important that you know the facts of, of there's, three, there's three kinds of water heaters, okay? Uh, you got the one that, that runs on gas only, LP only, okay? Um, you got the one that runs on LP and electric, and then you have on demand um, or tankless, right? The other two have tanks. The on demand does not. Um, but within those three water heaters, they're, they're not all created equal by any stretch of the means. You know, the, 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 the LP only, um, most of those are not porcelain lined. And all that means is all those hard water particles that, that, that you know, I mean, our, our water sucks these days, right? And we, we know it. That's why we pay 
a buck fifty for a bottle of water that somebody poured out of a tap and put a label on it. <laughs> right? We've heard those stories, right? Don't know what's real. Uh, but anyway, you know, that water heater um, usually needs to be replaced about every five years because of our high quality water that goes into it, corrodes the interior lining of it, um, and eventually it just doesn't operate anymore. You know, slowly it operates worse and worse and worse, and then it just doesn't operate. Uh, the porcelain lined, uh, that is normally the one that has the, uh, the ion rod that goes in there. You pull it out and that collects all the hard water particles because it won't build up on that porcelain lining in there. Um, most of those, and I don't name brands. Maybe you guys have noticed that. I don't call anybody on the carpet because it doesn't matter. This is about um, giving some education out there so you know what it is, you, what you're buying when you buy it. Okay, that's, that's what I try to do. But the porcelain lined one will normally be a gas, an LP electric. And normally you can run those on LP and electric for what's called a quick recovery of 16.2 gallons per hour. Um, and there's different sizes. You got 6, you got 10, you got 12, okay, um, in those versions. And they can be any combination thereof, okay. Um, so there's some protective measures there. And Well, then you say, well, Scott, why doesn't everybody use that? Well, it's all about the money. So if you're a manufacturer, okay, and let's say there's, there's, there's $100 difference between this water heater and this water heater, and you want to be an entry-level price leader, which one are you going to pick, right? We, 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 we do The money that they save over the number of units that they produce that year is huge for a manufacturer, maybe not to the end user, right? So the end user, it costs you an extra 150 bucks for the better water heater, and you would much rather pay that. But if your RV outfitter guy or that sales guy that you meet out there at somebody else's dealership doesn't explain that to you, then you're not given that option. That's why it's important that we give you that option. That's why it's important that you have an RV outfitter that's going to sit down with you and talk about the things that, that, you know, that, that, that this camper has to meet the needs of what you want to do. Okay, um, Topic for another day. Then we have what's called the on-demand or the tankless. Now, these things are really cool, <laughs> okay? Um, but there's some challenges there. One, there's, there's, there's well, there, there used to only be two different brands, and now, I don't know, there's five or six or whatever. But what I can tell you is, is don't buy the $600 one. doesn't work as, as promoted. It just doesn't, okay? you got to spend 900 bucks or a little bit more to get one. It actually does what it's supposed to do. Now somebody can go in and take a shower, right, with constant hot water, and, and you don't have to take a, a, a sailor shower. Sailor shower is you get in, you get wet, turn the water off, you soap up, you turn it back on, you rinse off. That first water heater that we talked about, LP only, that's what you're doing there. That's what you're doing. It's six gallon, there's no quick recovery, it runs on LP only, boom. So, um, but here's the challenge. So now my daughter or my granddaughter, they both like to hang out in the shower for a long time. So we send them to the bathhouse, right, Rebecca? Um, here's the problem. You better know how big of a gray water tank you have, right? i got endless hot water. You can fill that bad boy up pretty fast if you have someone like my daughter who loves to hang out in the shower for a while, okay? So it has challenges. So in your bigger motorhomes that, that, that have a, a 70, 80 gallon um, gray tank, it's built for that, right? Some of the ones coming out now that have the, the tankless water heater in them, the manufacturer knows I need to put a bigger gray tank in there because these people are going to use more water. But a lot of people go out and they buy the camper and they... The first thing they do is they go on eBay and they buy one of those babies and pop it in there and boom, I got myself, you know, I got a couple friends that have done that and they love it. Just be aware of the challenge, okay? Because uh, it is an easy transformation from that to that, just so you know. There's like six bolts in there that hold the baby in, a few pipes, boom, 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 you're done. It's not that big of a deal, about an hour's worth of work for a guy that, that has some inclination of what's happening there. So, water heaters. Right? They're not all created equal. Everybody out there has one. you got to have it, you know. It's just, you want to try to be aware of which one that camper has. may not change your buying decision, but it, now you know when you go out to use it, you know what you have and how it's going to function for you. You know, does that, am I making sense here? Now I can plan my day. 
I've got three kids. I've got this big bunk house. We're all going to be out playing and hiking. We all got to take showers. So how are we going to space that out to not run out of hot water on that six gallon LP only water heater, right? Ain't no big, doesn't make it bad, guys. Makes a little bit less money because it's about the money. That's where, you know, that's at the end of the day, we got price points. That's why there's so many different products out there with so much different stuff in them. So, um, hey, I think I'm going to leave you with that. Um, I'm going to go get my act together here and get fired up and get the van loaded for this weekend. Rosemont, Donald Stevenson Center, starting on Thursday. I think we start at noon on Thursday. Maybe it's 11. I'll be there. I don't know. I haven't looked it up. I don't think when they open the door, I'm there. So I don't pay much attention to the hours. I get to leave when they all everybody else is out of the building. I get to go back to the hotel and hang out and have a steak and stuff like that. So uh, Donald Stevenson Center, the uh, RV show down in Chicago there in Rosemont. Dude, guys, it's a big one. If you want to come out and get confused, come on out and get Because it is awesome. It's fun. It's a day. It's an entire day. The auto show is going on this weekend, too, in Chicago, which kind of bothers me because I don't get to go to the auto show because I'm working the RV show. Uh, the auto show is pretty cool, too. But I get it. It brings a lot of people in. I mean, the people come from all over and stay in hotels. And there's people that will spend three days at the RV show trying to figure it out. So uh, at an RV show, it's not a place for an education, just so you know. You know, there I go, and, and, and I, I kind of change hats there. I, I do become an RV salesperson at the RV show. What I mainly focus on, on the, at the RV show is getting appointments to come out and see us out here in Rockford, Illinois, so that we can sit down and talk a while. I get over 300 products. I, we have something for everybody. Sometimes we don't believe that, but we do. We have something for everybody. So it's an awesome to have you come out and sit down and, and, and let us be your RV outfitter and ask the important questions. For those of you that maybe haven't been doing it very long or for those of you that are just stepping into it, right? It's important that you get that. Because at the RV show, you're going to get quick info fast, you know, and if we want to buy, it's going to be a, a, a fast process to get you set down, do some paperwork, get some money, take it off the market, reserve it for you until we can get you out here and talk again later. That's what happens down there, guys. They're moving and shaking, right? Not a bad thing. It is what it is. If that, that's the reality of the RV show. It's moving and shaking. So... If you've got a lot of questions and you need an education, a lot of information, go to the show and figure out the things you can, that you can do without. Figure out the things that you've got to have when you want to go RVing because that's what you've got to do, right? Um, then you can go sit down. You don't have to buy at the show. If it's right, if you're feeling good, things are exciting, don't get wrapped up in it. But if, but if, but if it feels right, it's okay, pull the trigger. If you don't want to pull it, don't, don't pull it. It's okay. Those guys that tell you that sale price is only good for today, mm, probably not. Probably not. We go there and spend a lot of money. We want to make some sales. Maybe there are some incentives there. I don't know. you got to you got to figure out if that's real or if that's Memorex, right? So with that said, I'll be down at the show. Uh, moving, moving gear today and uh, be talking to you again here tomorrow morning. And then, you know, Wednesday, same thing. No... No time off this time of year. It's all right. We're all right. So, guys, I want to thank you so much. Sorry I kept rambling on there, but that's that's what I do. That's the reality of Scott. So, um, keep it real with Scott McKeever over here at Collier RV in, in Rockford, Illinois. And my direct phone number to my cell phone is 815-222-5149. Yes, I'm crazy. Yes, I put it out there. Yes, I get all kinds of robocalls. Don't care. I want you to be able to get a hold of me if you need to get a hold of me. Or maybe you just want to say hi. You know, Mark and Carol down in Texas, uh, love you guys, miss you guys. Um, some very good friends of, my, of ours down there and uh, really miss those guys down there. But, uh, hey, I, I hear they check in with me from time to time and watch some of the, uh, my live feeds, and I greatly appreciate that. So, hey, guys, I love you all out there. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.